Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And you guys already know that for a couple of weeks now, I've been on vacation and lots of things have been happening within the Blender community. And I think it's actually a good time to do a compilation of some amazing, cool set of features and also cool set of things that is happening that you guys will definitely need to be aware of. So first off, there is a brand new release of Blender 2.93.4, the LTS. And this is following the fact that, you know, there's a couple of updates. And of course, this one comes with a huge update for the video sequence editor. Now, for anyone who would like to get the 2.93.4 update, you can simply go over to the link in the description, which will bring you right here, where you can choose to download this directly from the Windows Store, or you can download this from Steam or from Snap. So depending on the platform of choice which you're working with, you'll be able to get up to speed with this one. Now, with that said, of course, there's also a huge set of developers blog and stuff that you guys definitely, definitely need to see. Now, before we get into the developer side of things, let's talk about some of the nice things that has been going on. Now, one of the major updates that you need to have an idea about is the Blender 3.0 will not be coming out anytime soon as this has been rescheduled for some time in December. With the Beacon 2, 3 and 4 happening on September the 22nd, October the 20th and November the 24th respectively. Now this is to better create and build solid features which are to be fully integrated into Blender 3.0 and these include the Cycles X which you actually seen that is currently available in the recent master build of Blender 3.0, the Alpha, the Geometry Nodes which deals with fields, Asset Browser and some proposed UI changes which we're also going to take a look at. Now with this set, we're going to dive directly into Blender 3.0. Now with Blender 3.0, the alpha opened right here. You would notice that the UI looks pretty much the same. But of course, there's a couple of things that's changed. And we're going to start off by talking about one of the changes that you would notice right here. So previously, if you open up the previous version of Blender, which we have right over here. So the previous version of Blender we have here is the 2.93.4. If we go over to the scene section, you would notice that we have a very, you know, nice, lovely and pretty cool thing that we regularly used to work with. But of course, there is now a change right here, because if we go over here, you would now notice that this has been properly sorted out. Like right here, you notice we have the format and over here we have like the frame range and the frame range just deals with frame range. Contrary to what we had here before, which, you know, you can see the frame range and the frame rate right here. So with that said, there is also some very cool improvements as well, which you would notice that deals with thumbnails. So at this point, if you click on file, go over to open to open up a new scene, you would now notice that we have thumbnails that can best describe what file you're opening. Now, these thumbnails can be played with. So at any point in time, if you go over to your edit section and go over to preference, you can simply go over to the section where you have save and load and choose what file preview you would like to see. So depending on how you would like to save your file, let's say for example, if we want to save our file based on a screenshot, this is how it will be saved and that is how we can preview the file. And of course, if we want to save this by the camera view, this will take a look at the camera view, which is like this view right now. And this is the view you get to see once you're about to open that file. Now this is totally up to the user, how they like their file preview to be set. And in most cases, you would notice that this is definitely going to be set to automatic. Now, with that said as well, there is also another cool update that is now available within the preference that you can take advantage of. So if you go over to the key mapping section, there is a pretty new update right here. So right over here, you will see that we have two keys and this is set to intermediate and then we have the active tool. So by default, how you get to work with Blender is as simple as this. Say, for example, you like to switch to your move tool or your rotate or your skill. How this works is simple. You select any of these and you simply move back and forth. And if you tap R on the keyboard, you would notice that you can just simply rotate. But of course, you don't get to see this gizmo right here. And all of that is about to change because if you go over to edit, go over to the preference section and click on active tool. And probably let's just go ahead and save this preference and bring this down. If we tap R on the keyboard, you notice that this simply switches and it brings home that Maya and 3D Studio Max feel. And of course, if we proceed to tap S on the keyboard, we now also get that gizmo. So this makes a lot of sense and I believe a lot of people will find this one 
pretty pretty interesting to work with there are also some updates that deals with the ui that deals with the freestyle ui upgrade and of course if you would like to read more about this and also see some ui changes that the folks at bnpr are actually sponsoring you may want to come through and check it out at the same time there is a remove menu while showing the weight cursor when saving and this way it would give the idea that something is in progress rather than just simply keeping the menus and allowing the user to tamper with it. Something else that is very visible that you would notice with the Blender UI, if you've been working with Blender for a long time and if you're coming from 2.93 to 3.0, the alpha, is this. That if you take a look at the top side, you would now notice that we have all of this, which include the overlay and the shading uh, types. You would notice that we have them all tagged on this point. Now, contrary to what you have with the previous one, where you get to see some of this on top and some of them down here, it makes for good real estate. So you can see that these menus as well are now hanging right here. So the select box now stays where it is supposed to be, contrary to this you know, weird way that it is. Now, something else that makes sense is if you go ahead and you hit on the select button to select any of these objects, you don't necessarily see a feedback, you just get to see that we have this cross sign and then orientation by the side. And if we select this other one, you notice that we have the icon and then orientation by the side. But that is a bit different now because at this point, if you select any of these objects, you can now notice that these ones are down here. So unlike what you had before, where you get to notice this here and then the other ones down here, there is a bit of a swap, which makes more sense to me. And uh, I think a lot of people would also agree on this one. Now, we're also going to talk about the rendering section that also has a little bit of an update as well. And this includes, and uh, actually this is more for cycles, because if we select this object and we go over to the rendering section and switch this to cycles, you would notice that we have this having the sampling. And within the sampling, we have the viewport and the rendering section. And these deals with what you can set for the viewport, the noising, and also the minimum and maximum sampling. And down here, you can also see that we have the settings for the rendering as well. Now, there's a cool UI update that is also pretty nice, and that deals with how you split your editors. So if I simply click, and before I move this, it will tell me if I can actually, you know, make another editor right here, or if I can match this down here, or if I can match this. And this is very nice. So you can notice that we have this nice visual feedback with the cursor, and this for sure is definitely going to be very useful. Now with that said, let's dive over and talk about the geometry node. The geometry node has dramatically changed and right now we have lots of lots of cool things that you can now do with the geometry node. Now for that, we're simply going to go ahead and get a brand new scene and take a look at how this one works. So the very first thing which you would notice with the geometry node is if we go over to the geometry node right here and we click on the new button and you know hit shift and A on the keyboard, we now have a long list of things. You know, the last time we talked about the geometry node, what we had was pretty decent and very simple. Everyone could get into the geometry node at that point. It doesn't mean you can't right now. It just means that there are more nodes that you can work with. So if you go over, you would notice that previously how we get to distribute points was just simply get your point instances and also you can get your points distribute. And, and these were the ways that you could easily distribute points across a mesh. But all of that is changing as right now for you to actually distribute points. You need to hold down, shift and tap A on the keyboard, go over to the point, and you can distribute points based on faces. So if we click right here to distribute point on the face, we can simply create this. And this way you can now notice that we are distributing points on this face. And this is very lovely as well, because right now you just need one node to actually get a lot of things happening. And if, for example, I would choose to instance across several parts so let's say i want to instance a particular uh primitive so let's go ahead and find a primitive and for this example we might simply use a cone and drop that cone right there and i would like to distribute this what we can do is go over to the point and instance on point make sure that you have that there click on the geometry which is our cube of course you can see that so we'll click on this geometry which is our cube connect that to the point click on the instance drag that there and now we can click and drag over to the instances and right here you can see how this works so with one single node you can now play with the rotation however you choose and you can also choose to play with the scale 
however you choose. So this makes a lot of sense and I believe lots of people will find this one very rewarding to work with. And what I would like to show you guys is this, that the curve tool or, you know, any curve tool at all now in Blender now supports the geometry modify node. So we can select that, tap G on the keyboard and move this to this point. And once we select this, we can now do some amazing things. Now there is one very cool thing that you can also do with this. So regardless of the fact that you now have a lot of things here that you can toy with, you can simply go over to the curve section, or if you simply create any of these curves, you can go over to the curve section and you can simply use a curve fill to fill this up. You can also do some more stuff with this. So if we also go over to the curve section, you can see that we have a whole lot of things that you can do with that. You can resample this curve if you want to, you can reverse it. You can also play with the curves that exist. And it's very interesting to see that you have some very procedural ones as well. So for example, if we just wire this one all the way to this point, you notice that we have this as a procedural curve that you can work with and you can do some amazing and amazing things with this. So the Blender Geometry node, since the last time we talked about it, has evolved and developed a lot more. And it's just very interesting to see that you have all of these things. We've already talked about some of these tools. So simply go over to previous videos and look at them. And for the fields and also the new updates for the fields, we would also proceed to talk more about these things in subsequent videos. And when we talk about the geometry node, the roundup episode one for the Google Summer of Code that deals with geometry codes was rounded up on the 6th of September. And there were a couple of things. So if you would like to see some of the newly added nodes, you want to see what was discussed, you want to see some of these things and probably you want to see the regression testing of the geometry nodes, you might want to also, you know, go over to the link in the description. Furthermore, there is also the Google Summer of Code Roundup Episode 2 that deals with the editorial endeavors. So there is actually editorial endeavors that deals with the geometry node as well. And this actually deals more with the video sequencer, which is more like a follow-up. And within this time, they did discuss a couple of things. And for those who like to see the updates for this one, you want to see the updates that also deals with the UV you can come through and check this out. And at the same time, while we talk about the new things that is happening within the developer section that you might also want to look at, there is also the procedural curves in 3.0 and beyond. So the idea here is trying to make the geometry nodes as stable as possible and as universally accepted and uh, how you can work with this across the entire primitive tool sets that exist with Blender. And right now, the curve tools are also having some love from this and you can come through and also read more about how you can work with these things and how you can make the most out of them. And this isn't the only blog that actually deals with this, as you might also be able to find even more updates within the Google Summer of Code Roundup Episode 3. And from here, you can also see some very heavy, or should I say nice improvements of things that you can do with this. And right now, you can also proceed to add a curve fillet node that you can use to fillet several sharp edges within your geometry node. At the same time, the curve pen also has a couple of updates that deals with the overhauling of the curve editing process and also creation. And moving forward, there is also a beautiful improvement of a knife tool. So this is uh, going to have a dedicated video for it because there's a couple of things I would like to explain to you guys about how you can work with a knife tool. But it always, let's take a look at some of the things that you can still do with the geometry node because I think it makes sense to actually explain uh, this new feature. Yeah, this new stuff that is now here. So we already talked about the fact that there is a fillet node. So let's just go in and, and look at that. So you can throw in a fillet right now and you can see what we have there. Actually, let's throw in a fill node so that you guys can also see what we can get with that. And you can see that. So let's mute this. And with this here, because we have this set to base here, we can do some very interesting things. So we can also select this, tap M on the keyboard, and you can see that. So you can make some very interesting designs with this one. At the same time, if we go in, you know, just a bit, we can also get that sort of sharp looking edge. But if you switch over to poly, you can play with the radius. Now this is where this actually shines and makes a lot of sense. So we can go over to the radius section and we can just add just a tiny bit of a radius let's increase the count so you can see that and we can play with the radius and we can also increase the count so if we switch back to Bezier, you can see what we have there but if we switch over to poly you can see all of this beautiful stuff so in this way we can have a good radius 
and we can have a good count and we can have this as smooth as we want it to be. Contrary to what you have once you're using a Bezier, the poly actually makes more sense. So this is one of the things that you can do with this. Now let's explore something else. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete these ones and delete this one. And let's talk about something else that makes sense. So if you've taken note of the geometry notes, you would notice we now have text. Now within the text section, you can bring in special characters if you like to throw them in. And you can also proceed to get some string joints if you want to join them in. And um, also, you can also proceed to play with some of these other ones. So right here, we have string to curve, which we're going to explore. So I'm just going to keep this one by the side. And then we're also going to take a look at something else that you can do with this. There's also something known as the string substring, and then we have a value to string. So if we bring this out here, we can also proceed to get a string itself. And if you take a look at the text section, you would not notice or you wouldn't see a string. So how you can get this is within the input section. So we would go in and get the string and click and drag that right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and connect this one. And you would notice that the geometry node turns red because, you know, this is not a string, so I'm just going to unplug that and then proceed to drag in this value and connect this one right here. Now, once I do that, the first thing which you notice is automatically we now have something that reads a value and displays that as a string. So if you already have a set of node that has values and you want to drop those values and you want those values to be displayed on your viewport, this makes more sense because at this point you can see we can drive this all the way. And if we go in and get that field, we can also use that field to fill this up and you can see that. So we can drive this all the way up and if we like to get decimals, we can have some decimals like that. And right now we're not dealing with integers anymore, we're not dealing with float values and we can get these as much as we want. But of course, if you already want to have a string value and you want that string value to do one or two things, then you can also drag the string across to this point. And in this case, we can type in the word blender and press the enter key and you can notice that we have that so let's just put that exclamation sign and shout it out yep and that is what we have so lots of uh, nice things from the folks at blender foundation and of course you can simply go over to the links which are going to be in the description where you can explore this now for the knife tool we're going to talk about the knife tool improvements in a separate video but at this point these are some of the nice things that you can do with the geometry node and even way more stuff that you can do with this. So you can simply download a fresh copy of the Blender 3.0 Alpha build and start exploring some of these beautiful things that it has to offer. And moving on, let's talk about Cycles. Previously, when we talked about Cycles X, it was still as an experimental tool, but right now Cycles X is now part of the Blender Alpha version. So once you have the Blender Alpha version, you can now take advantage of the Cycles X that is now currently within the master build of Blender 3.0, the Alpha, and do some amazing things. Now the GPU kernel and scheduling has been totally rewritten for better performance. And of course, you can take advantage of all of the beautiful things that Cycles X has to offer. Now at the point of this recording, there is a beautiful before and after that you can take a look at. So if you go over to the link, which I'm also gonna put in the description, you can take a look at this, and you can also choose to play with tile and memory usage, depending on the kind of PC that you're using at a particular point in time. And this would definitely get you better results and also help maximize your CPU and your GPU performance while working in Blender. Now, for those who might want to read more about this one, there's definitely going to be a link in the description. So do well to check it out. Now, the Asset Browser is one of those tools that we've already loved and we've become so attached to it. One of the nice updates within the Asset Browser is right now, you can easily drag and drop materials from the Asset Browser or from the Asset Browser slot directly onto your objects in your viewport. The asset browser is coming up to speed with huge updates coming up every single time. And at the same time, there is a tons of updates coming to the grease pencil. So the grease pencil is also having a beautiful update with a smooth thickness for grease pencil. And the beautiful thing about this one is this doesn't just thematical images, your grease pencil lines, but the beautiful thing about it is it also proceeds to blend them. So you can now easily blend from one stroke to another and you can see the beautiful blend from the old stroke to the new one. Now, this is very nice for those who like to make some very quick sketches or maybe you want to make sketches and you want to proceed to have 
a smooth follow from the previous stroke to a new one this would come in extremely handy something else which will come in extremely handy especially for grease pencil users is this brand new modifier known as dot dash so if you simply add the dot dash it gives you the opportunity to add dots and dashes to your grease pencil stroke so with this here you can create several segments and of course you can offset these things and how it works is simple so with the dash you can add a couple of dash and you can play with the gap so let's just make this a little bit more and then we can play with the gap and you can get a gap like that and in this case we can also just simply play with the radius to reduce that put a plus sign and then we can continue and do some even you know crazier stuff with it so we can get something like this and then we can play with the radius as well and at this point we're controlling the second one and we can play with the gap as well and play with the dashes and we can choose to offset these however we want so if you're into animation and probably you just want to animate this this is also very useful so we can set this all the way to zero go all the way here right click inside the keyframe and we would move over to say frame 40 and we're just going to drag this all the way to a point like that or you can simply click on the keyframe sign to add one so if i just drag this one all the way up bounce this all the way there set this to 40 and then press the playback button you can see that we just have this loop that keeps going and going so you can do some amazing things with your grease pencil right now and of course you can also go over to your grease pencil stroke go over to the line make some color changes and get the most out of it and when we speak about things that you can also get the most out of your compositor is having a very cool new update to the node actually not like a whole new update it's just a very simple node that has been added to this one so if you go over to the node section actually if you go over to the add section and then you type in the word poster there is a brand new posterize node that you can work with so we can simply click and add that there and this node is very useful especially for those who like to create things like masks so the new posterized node actually limits the number of colors that you get per channel when working with an image and you can use the step slider to play with how much channel colors you'll be getting so this is going to be very useful for those who like to make masks or maybe you just want to create a very cool retro looking poster you're going to love this one moving forward let's talk about something within the video sequencer data so we've already talked about the fact that the video sequencer data does have a couple of fixes and you know it's more like updates coming to it but right now, there is this nicer one that makes a lot of sense for me. So what you can do now is with your video sequence, you literally have to zoom right into a point like this. And then you go over to where you have your overlays, you click and you go over to the thumbnails. And right now you can now see a thumbnail of what you're working on. Now, if you would like to seek easily, you can tap S on the keyboard and you can easily, you know, seek through this. And that makes sense and it looks good. To me, I think it's not necessarily seeking. You just, you know, sliding the entire uh, footages back and forth. Because if it was just seeking, then the playhead should have been moving. But this is what it is. And we can move around with this one. And of course, you can also cut around this. So the video sequencer is, you know, is getting up to speed. It's looking cool. And I appreciate every single effort that has been put into this to make it to get where it is right now. So with that said, let's talk about some community stuff. So we always love free stuff. And right here, we do have a beautiful add-on that is totally for free that can help you import things and use them as decals directly in Blender. And this is known as import as decals and is made available by Amandip. So you can go ahead and check out this one. And of course, if you go over to his page, you would also notice that there's a couple of free stuff that he already has. And he is the creator of the RAN tools. So you can proceed to get RAN tools right here on either gumroad or you can go over to blender market and get it either ways you can take advantage of the free tools that he already has and start making some amazing stuff true terrain version 4.1 is here and this comes with some pretty cool updates and this tool set is just growing and getting better so in case you would like to check this one out link to this is also going to be in the description you might also want to check out docky 3ds real-time materials and uh, this is also something that is really really nice especially for those who like to work with procedural materials but don't want to create this you just need something that can get you up to speed really really quick you'll be able to have about 200 editable materials that you can use to create that style or create that look 
that you're going for. You might also want to come through and check out Chip Walters as he has just released the W Parallel offices, rooms and retail K packs and this is extremely useful and you might also take a look at some of the beautiful things that he already has here that makes sense and for those who have been looking for scatter stuff you might want to come through and check out the scatter 4 and we've already mentioned before that scatter is coming and it is coming in hot so you can proceed to go over and get the free version of scatter right now or you can simply get this version so that you don't need to pay an extra fee when the version 5.0 is out but of course if you'd like to test it you can simply go over to this page that can get you the scatter 5 which is still in its open beta and you can proceed to play with this one. So this is more like it, lots of things to talk about and lots of things to catch up with and it is just very interesting to see that Blender 3.0 is getting up to speed with a whole lot of things that it is coming with. Now for those who might want to check out all of these things, I'm going to put a link in the description that can bring you right over here and also to some very useful pages where you can catch up with some of the beautiful improvements that is coming with Blender 3.0. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace